the Rhino, Armoured Personnel Carrier. Welcome, gentle listener. I am Baldemort, your faithful servant, and I wish to introduce you to the forces, factions, and war gear of the Warhammer 40k universe, the grim darkness of the far future, where there is no time for peace. There is only time for war. Just a quick public service announcement. We have a channel for natural history and one for mythology now. So if you like our presentations, go have a look at the links in the description. You never know, you may like them. And now, this week, it is time for us to discuss one of the most important vehicles in all of the setting. For these noble steeds have been at the vanguard of humanity's armies from the first days of the Great Crusade all of the way to the era Indomitus. And their lineage, their heritage, their pedigree goes far, far further back than even that. They have weathered the hails of fire that would have slain all they carry. They have not crept quietly and stealthily to their targets, to their destinations. No. These faithful beings have taken their cargo, their masters, their riders, directly into the most dangerous conflicts mankind has ever known. They do not demur or resist the order to plow at full speed toward what many would consider unavoidable death. They are as brave as any. They are as brave as any who they have carried into the hellscapes of war. And so many of the battles and wars fought by the Imperium, be they of expansion, reclamation, or merely survival, have been won with the help of them. They are the chassis on which so many different patterns have been tried, tested, and found to be not just effective, but utterly superlative. Few vehicles in the history of man have been responsible for so much. For they are used by most of the elite services of the Imperial War Machine. Once, they even serviced the Imperial Army, but long gone are those days. Even so, it is possibly one of the most important vehicles outside of the void craft of the Imperial Navy. Yet it predates most of the patterns of the fleet. It has been the guardian of humanity for tens of thousands of years, all of the way back to the second and third wave of human colonization, if they were not actually part of the long march of vessels that initially took humanity to the stars of the Milky Way galaxy. It has been our friend, our ally, our trusty steed for all of that time. Of course, I could only be talking of the redoubtable Rhino in all of its various forms. The simple armoured personnel carrier that is so oft overlooked. It is, in truth, the very bedrock of human hegemony over the battlefields of the grim darkness of the far future. Without it, we would be lost. Yet some would take truck with my vernacular. Why, O oh floating skull, are you referring to them in such anthropomorphic ways? Why do you give them such animus? although the few who have experienced my video on land raiders may have some inkling. Still, one of my best, I am told, if not for those who are shy of a bit of emoting. Well, gentle listener, do not fear, for we are about to find out. And so, as usual, let us get into the very basics. To explain. The Rhino. Its designation is, more precisely, the Mars Patton Rhino, and it is an armoured personnel carrier. It has inches thick armour around every edge and panel. It is robust, fast, comparatively easy to construct and, at a push, semi-autonomous. The Rhino has a sealed compartment, meaning that it can be driven in nearly any climate or terrain, be it acid rain, cows of chemical or putrescent death, or just on a planet without the correct atmosphere to support human life. No matter what is happening outside of the vehicle, those inside are safe and sound from all external threats. And its armor is made of a plasteel frame upon which ceramide plates are stacked. Other materials can be used at a pinch, but this is the standard across most forge wells that create them. And that is nearly all forge wells and most chapters can do this also. 
though so many in the setting have this armor, it is still important to realize how truly solid these materials are. A rhino can shrug off all known small arms fire, except potentially that of the Necrons. Bolters ping off its hide. Shuriken cannot cut through it. Plasma and fusion weapons can damage a rhino, but only if used in a sustained way, or from a weapon specifically designed to bring the most powerful tanks to heal. They are simply put, a metal box that just will not be stopped. A rhino's engine is not only the heart of the noble beast, but also a testament to the pragmatism and creativity of the human race. For the engine can work on nearly any combustible material, even, as is so often touted, Prometheum. So it is not actually difficult to gain fuel for this universal conveyance. It works on a dynamo system and has its own air supply and has two separate electric motors. So if one should fail, or more likely be damaged, then its speed will be reduced, but nothing save its utter destruction will stop it entirely. It is simple enough that it can be driven by one person, even firing automated weaponry as they go, yet is expansive enough to carry a full squad of ten power-armored wearing space marines. And given their dimension, it is easy to see how they could carry quite a few more mortal men and women. It has a hatch on its top, as do most armored vehicles, but also two further doors, one on either side of its body. Deployment through them into a firefight requires great skill, hence the Rhino also has a simple ramp mechanism at its rear. The hatches smash down, and the ramp makes escaping the Rhino safe and swift, even for a half score of post-human running tanks. Its versatility in deployment is also a huge boon to any who are carried by it because it leaves the enemy guessing on exactly where to aim, where to concentrate their fire. And the ability to come out of many openings can confuse the opponent for that fraction of a second necessary for the Marine to take their own enhanced accuracy shot and slay a foe before they can even react. The back ramp also means that the Marines, or whichever force is inside, can use them as a mobile bunker, hiding when fire is too thick, sallying out when the enemy reloads. The standard armament of a rhino is also nothing to sneeze at. Many might scoff at this assertion, as there are so many world-ending weapons attached to armored vehicles in the setting, but I find it important to not let that muddy the waters. The rhino is adequately armed all right, for most have pintle-mounted storm bolters. One is usually remotely operated or even automatic in its target acquisition and extermination. The other that can be added is usually manually aimed and fired, but more. The Rhino can be fixed with a hunter-killer missile. A one-shot weapon, granted, but that singular shot has, in its time, brought low tyrants, smashed down walls, slain enemy heroes, destroyed the elite units and entrenchments, or even, as part of a barrage, been instrumental in destroying gods of war, the titans of the battlefield. One of these missiles is bad. Consider 20 being fired at you. All from these APCs who are just rolling forward. Deadly. And please do remember how potent the bolter is unto itself. A storm bolter has twice the output of these horrific shells that are armored piercing and then high explosive all in one. Never, ever underestimate the bolter. Ever. The Rhino chassis itself has been altered and amended, enhanced and reconfigured so many times that to merely list all of the versions would extend this entry to a degree approaching tedium, no matter how dulcet my tones may be. Just some of the most important and prevalent of its versions are the very core of the armies that deploy them. The Razorback, which is a Rhino with a heavy weapon fixture replacing its Storm Bolter, giving much needed punch but reducing the carry capacity of marines to only five or so. The Predator tank, with its side sponsons of heavy weapons and its massive cannon on a turret simply plonked onto the rhino chassis, it is a terror. The Whirlwind, which again 
is not more than a rhino with a huge anti-air or long-range bombardment system attached. The Vindicator. Being a huge siege cannon in place of the main cabin for troops, it moves forward and obliterates anything in its path. The Damocles Command Rhino, with additional command and control options. The Sabre Tank Hunter, the bane of all armor on the field. The Immolator, used by the Adeptus Sororitas, the Sisters of Battle, to carry the holy flame of the Emperor's Wrath right into the heart of the enemy. Or the Exorcist, again the Adeptus Sororitas, the mad organ of missile firing annihilation. And also the Incarcerator, a moving holding cell, the Repressor, used by the Arbites, the Castellan, the brainchild of Puerto Rabo, the Lord of Iron, to become bunkers when they have driven into position. The list goes on and on. There are few things in all of our history amongst the stars with such a breadth of versatility and utility. But I claimed that it potentially outdates the very ships of the line, its pattern, one of the oldest known to mankind. For it was always a part of the STC program, or standard template constructs, that went with humanity unto the stars. But there are strong links and details that state that the Rhino was an STC, of course, but that it predates even that system and period. That some of the first colonies of humanity after the long march ships had these vehicles as a primary method of exploration of their new homes, the worlds we colonized. Hence, they were indeed added to the SDC collection, when humanity created it, but that it predates even the age of technology, which means the Rhino predates the fleet by quite some time indeed. Now to my use of language, for I have made it almost familial to our race, because from my old soppy perspective, it is. One of the most important stages in the creation of the Rhino, the one that the tech priests of Mars take the most care and scrupulous diligence in performing and checking, is in its machine spirit. For we all know by now that the use of abominable intelligence, what we would call artificial intelligence, is strictly banned in all of the human realms. Only the League seem immune to this decision. For it harkens back to the most difficult and costly war the sentient beings of the galaxy fought since the war in heaven. A confrontation that made the Horus Heresy look like a minor scuffle. The Cybernetic Rebellion. Which was so devastating that even the other races of the galaxy worked with humanity to stop them and only just. So AI is banned. But the minor machine spirits of the vehicles of the Imperium, and the Rhino in specific, are not to be underestimated as just lines of code defining reactions. No. The Rhino is not sentient. It is not a being per se, but it does have a machine spirit. It will never feel fear, never cower away from fire, never refuse a command to drop the hatches and allow its riders to dismount. But it is not a toy. It is not simply programmed. It is not a remote-controlled car. The machine spirit within the Rhino is not as potent as that of the Land Raider, to be sure, so there is even less personality that can be found in those great beasts. But to say that the Rhino has no character at all is potentially naive for they are aware on a level that can be difficult to understand. Their senses can detect so much more than a human senses. They know what is happening on the battlefield as well, if not better, as a marine or sororitas owners. A land raider might take independent action and even wage a one-tank war against his foes, as happened on Rin's world, or even be filled with such righteous zeal by exposure to chapters like the Black Templars that they might slip the leash, and even assault enemy positions before given direct orders. Now a rhino is not as self-determined, not as aggressive, and certainly less often affected by those it carries, but it does happen, 
and they do have that machine spirit. So I compare a land raider to an attack dog, a hound of war, and I would compare a rhino to a St. Bernard or a Labrador, just perhaps. I am often prone to romanticizing things, yes, I do read those comments for good or evil, but I cannot be shaken from the feeling that these are the protectors of humanity and that they are aware of it, but like a good companion animal instead of a warhound. And there are so many ways in which it can be considered a being unto itself, for Rhino also has self-repairing systems, so in a very real way it can often be left alone to lick its wounds and slowly become combat-worthy again. Of course, there will always be some damage that is simply too much and will require the assistance of a tech marine or priest of Mars to fully heal or repair. But many, many rhinos have been left for dead only to reactivate and wait patiently for their masters to allow them to rejoin the armies of mankind to carry its creators back into the hell of war. So, for me, they are every bit as precious, every bit as flavorsome, every bit as interesting as a land raider. They may not have the firepower or size, aggression or even intellect as these majestic vehicles, but in a very real way, they are far more important. For an attack dog is a friend when in danger, when in conflict, but a working dog is a necessity for nearly every situation, not just war. Yet, even in this arena, they are loyal, devout, and courageous. I see the rhino not as a lump of metal with tracks, but as a huge animal that carries its owners to danger and out again, like a massive but mostly passive dog that stands above the cradle as the wolves move in. It is our defender, it is our shield, it is our transport, and it is our friend. So do not just get a few rhinos to take your men from point A to point B before unleashing them into the hordes of the enemy. Take the next step. Think about what that rhino can do after the men have disembarked. For a rhino is not just for delivery. It is a moving wall, a threat that can rush into the enemy to break their charge and threaten their most important assets. The rhino, as a working dog, not a warhound, may not destroy that which you charge it at, but, as it was always designed to do, it will force the enemy to deal with it. It will force the enemy to fire on it, instead of the masters it serves, and show it some goddamn respect, because so few of us would do what it does. The Emperor may protect, but most often it is in the form of his armored personnel carriers. It is by sending his children, humanity, the Rhino. I have been Baldemort, your faithful servant. Please do check out our links for other entertainment opportunities, as mentioned earlier. And thank you for your precious time. Now, no matter what you do today, do try to make some time for fun. Toodaloo.